and welcome everybody to another one of our encounters. We are making these at Ebbet every day at 4.30 Southern African time. We meet up here on Facebook and YouTube. Please, if you are enjoying uh, these sessions, either up or down, uh, depending on the platform that you are watching us, please put a like, subscribe to our channel and pencil in uh, for every day uh, as the things are coming uh, for, forward about what we are going to talk. So last week we have started a series of events regarding Portuguese cuisine and how social and cultural and uh, impactful uh, the, the gastronomy uh, is in the mindset of Portuguese people and Portuguese descendant as well and how much uh, do the population in general are aware of these same impacts. And yesterday, so another another week, it started and we uh, began with the history um, or Portugal historic background. So we started uh, about uh, the Celts and the Phoenicians in influence in the Iberian Peninsula and Portugal and uh, today we have decided that we are going to start talking about the influence of the next uh, people coming which is the Roman influence. So myself, I was brought up in Angola as you know and uh, with the independence war in 75, I then moved to Portugal, not as a retornada because I was not returning to Portugal because I was not born there, but my family was retornada, they were returning to Portugal and I arrived to my godmother's um, villa or, or town, which is, um, it was at the time a, a village and is now a city and um, uh, uh, it's, it's a real city, Caldas de Vizela, and it's also home to Roman warm bombs. So we even have a little statue that's representative of, a, of an original uh, that is called Vizela Romana, that is in our uh, municipal garden, uh, no Jardim Municipal, to honor these warm uh, baths. And the image that you have uh, seen as the slide is uh, actually regarding uh, that. But there are many others, so it's not only in, in Vizela. So with this series, we are going to explain to you, and there's a sequence, who were the peoples that arrived to what is today Portugal, and what have they left and what have they impacted to Portugal of today and Portuguese of today being a result of thousands of years. So we have started with 3,500 to 2,000 before Christ and the Celts in, uh, either in the north, Viana do Castelo, uh, Guimarães, Braga, Britaj, Vila, Vila Real, but also in uh, Évora and with other um, towns and the monuments and the entire village, they are still up uh, for us to see and have been discovered and re recovered for us to learn about these influences. So the, the following people were the Romans. And today we're going to talk about the Roman Portugal. And uh, as you um, as you know, the the Romans overran Gaul, which today is France. Many of you have read Asterix, uh, I would say, and uh, Asterix uh, was um, a figure, a, cart a cartoon um, that was uh, the 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 Viking that was um, fighting. Uh, the the Romans in Gallia, Gaul, remember? Porto, Cale, Portus Cale, but also Porto, Portus Gallia. And we're going to see why. So, 
The Romans overran uh, uh, what is today's France in seven years, but it took them almost two centuries to completely take over Iberia. The leader of the Lusitans, uh, which name was Viriatu, led his people in a, tri a triumphant campaign against the Romans, which led to his death at the hands of higher, hired assassins. So even today in Terres de Viriatu and in Viseu, there is this um, homage uh, to, to, to Viriatu and his bravery. After Viriatu's death, the Romans were able to take over and the Lusitanians withdrew to hilltop villages of the rural northwest and maintained resistance for several generations with occasional raids on the settled territory. The Romans, they settled everywhere, but their numbers in the north was comparatively small. The south was more to their liking because the lands were flatter, so it was, it was better for agriculture, but also for architecture. It was easier to transport waters with the aqueductus and the climate was also warmer and with more um, specific rain seasons, which was better for growing wheat, olives and grapes. They eventually imposed their language upon the entire peninsula and their code of law was applied which was also ultimately the basis of the Portuguese legal code. So even today, we call the Código Romano, or Roman law. Forums, temples and law courts were built in the cities. Large-scale agriculture was conducted and the plow was introduced. So roads and bridges they are still in evidence throughout Portugal. I remember when I was living in Portugal before I emigrated to South Africa in Azurada, there is this huge, huge, huge aqueduct still in place. And of course, what could do to the Zagos lives in Lisboa. So all of these were created as well as a system of large farming states called latifundius. Lati of uh, great, of big still seen in the areas of Alentejo, the only area in Portugal that allows for these latifundios uh, to, or, or being estates with many hectares to be in place. Then under Decimus Junius, Brutus and Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar, a capital was established at Olisipu, which is today Lisbon, Olisipu. And around the year 25 before Christ, Augustus divided the peninsula into several provinces and naming much of the area that eventually became Portugal. So he named it as Lusitania. And where can you see today the Roman Portugal? In the city of Évora, are the impressive remains of the second century temple of Diana with 14 Corinthian columns. Very, very, uh, in very good conservation still. The Roman town of Coimbriga, uh, close to the city of Coimbra, with amazing uh, tiles and, and constructions, was founded in the second century before Christ and has some of the best preserved Roman ruins in Iberia, which with remains of walls, columns used to structural or decorative purposes, also for classical ornamentation. It has an aqueduct, we call it aquedutu, has fountains and baths with magnificent mosaics and tiles, some of which can also be seen at the site museum now in place. And then you can also find Roman remains at um, Istoi. Istoi in the central Algarve, they have 
some tantalizing fragments of fish mosaics in a former bathing chamber, as well as a Roman villa at Pisoens, near the city of Beja, showing extensive floor mosaics and fragments of decorated walls, baths, a bathing pool, and a hypocaust as well. There are also remains of Roman buildings in Beja and a Roman bridge in the town of Chaves. Well, let me tell you and let me show you that the, the town where I was brought up, which is Vizela, it has a beautiful Roman bridge that I am going to show now to all of you. <laughs> to enjoy all of this curious. So, of course, I am passionate about uh, uh, this town and I'm also very passionate about the Roman times um, in Portugal. So these sul sulfurous waters of Isela are known international for its beneficial and therapeutic properties since the time of the Romans being the balneary of Vizela, the main tourism attraction of the city. The current building is a magnificent architectural e exemplar. It's surrounded by gardens that provide the general relaxation, but they also inspire feelings of tranquility and appeasement to its visitors. And if you walk close by and you cross the Roman bridge to the other side, just at the footsteps of the river, you can even go to the city park. And in the city park, you can come across another warm water ice. And you can also, which is uh, called uh, Bica Kilt. And in the center, which is the Praça de, de la Meira, you can also find uh, one sulfurous waters, uh, a Vizela, that was that was placed and built like an aqueduct by the Roman by the Romans themselves. So I really um, recommend you to to try and and to visit. And now this is a little short uh, story about the Roman times um, in, in in Portugal, but also. For you to understand that many of the names of Portuguese people, they are they derive from the Roman times. For an example, in this particular city that I've just told you, there is very common to find um, names like Caesar, Augusto, Marco, Antonio, uh, Alexandra, uh, Diana. Um, and other, 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 other names, um, Valeria, um, let me to Alexandre, 
So all of these names are all Roman names. And they stay until today because it's so much the influence of the Romans in the Portuguese uh, culture that it is evergreen, it's always updated, it's always modern, is we still derive our language from the common Latin, which is derived itself from common Roman. And still today, many of us, and it is still compulsory in primary school, that we all learn Roman numbers and Roman alphabet as well. So it is very important to not let down the importance of the Roman and the Roman culture and the Roman legacy in Portugal. Also, remember that Portuguese law is based on Roman law. I hope that you have found it very excited exciting again today and that you are able to call uh, your family and your friends to join us in these interesting conversations and tomorrow we're going to touch base on the next people the next povo that occupied the uh, territory and how what was the influence and what is today uh, where we can see still traces of their um, uh, their stay and uh, their legacy as well. So I hope that you stay safe and well and remember that we are closing tonight at midnight the date to choose which day we are going to run our live masterclass to cook a truly traditional cozido à portuguesa. So the dates are, those dates are either Tuesday the 19th, Thursday the 21st, or Saturday the 23rd of January at 8 o'clock in the evening. So please send a private message or be there in the comments what is your preference. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you tomorrow, same time, 4.30 in the afternoon, 